Oh, welcome back. We're up in the challenge a little bit in this one where we're going to use the sum of a geometric series to develop power series for functions. But this time we're going to center it about values other than zero. Um, this is something that you do not find on the BC exam, though the video one in this lesson you do. This is something you might find in a tough college course or a tough BC course. I used to have my students do this for sure. Let me teach it to you. Here we go. So write the first four non-zero terms and the general term for the power series expansion for this about x equal to 1. Again, if we're going to do this, we could technically do it with a Taylor polynomial, by the way. You could. That's allowed. I'm just showing you an alternative means of doing this. So Taylor works here really well, actually. So we've got a over 1 minus r is what we want this to be built to. So how the heck do we go from 1 over x to that? This is where things get really funky. The first thing I like to start with is what we're centered about. So I'm going to just put this, and if we're centering it about 1, I could do x minus 1. That would center it at about 1, right? That would give me my r value centered about 1. But I can't just put a minus 1 down there. Right? That doesn't make any sense whatsoever, just throwing a 1 down. So I can also, at the same time, add 1, because 1 minus 1 is 0. This still equals 1 over x, if you simplify that. It's nifty, right? Now, we want to be centered about 1. We are now. Check. But it's not quite 1 minus r. To make it that way, we're going to make this 1 over 1 minus a minus x minus 1. A lot of parentheses. Don't get swayed by the nastiness of parentheses. All I did is I turned this plus into a minus, a minus, that term. That then gives you your a value, your 1, and your minus r. So now remember your template, right? Your template is n equals 0 to infinity a times r to the n. And that, in this case, is equal to n equals 0 to the infinity of a r is minus x. And you could write that as minus 1 to the n if you want to, but I'm going to put it all together so that would be minus x minus 1. There's r all raised to the n. So however you want to write that, other people are going to write that as, just to show it to you, negative 1 to the n. There's that negative sign right there, times x minus 1 to the n. Doesn't matter how you write it, both ways work. But we're asked for the first four non-zero terms in the general terms. So that's equal to the first term when you plug in zero is just 1. We know that here. Minus, we're going to alternate signs, x minus 1. You're just multiplying by x minus 1 on alternating powers. Plus x minus 1 squared minus x minus 1 cubed. That's the first four non-zero terms. Plus dot 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 plus. And then I'll put negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n. There's your general term. And it keeps going. So there's your first four non-zero terms and the general term. And if that looks like something similar to the natural log, more on that in a little bit. Oh, yeah. All right, let's keep going here. Last problem of this video. Write the first four non-zero terms and the general term for the power series expansion for this about x equals 2. Again, you could use Taylor series here, but we're going to use the geometric form. We go to our template. We want a over 1 minus r. I mean, it's kind of close to that. Let me move the 2 over here and the 3x there, switching them so that we at least have a constant followed by the variable term. I don't want that to be a 2. I want it to be a 1. But I also want to be centered about 2. So let's center things about 2 to start. So centering things about 2, that'd be 4 over 2 plus 3 times huh, x minus 2 plus 2. And you might be like, wait, what? I'm not allowed to just do a minus 2 and leave it there. I have to simultaneously subtract 2 and add 2, so it's still x. So what I can then do is check this nifty algebra out. I take that 2 there. I'm going to leave the 3x minus 2 alone. That's centered at 2, so that's check. But to take the 2 out of here, we'd have to distribute. So 3 times 2 is 6. So that 6 is coming from 3 times 2. I know, it's weird, but it's cool. Fun with numbers with Mr. Groden, right? 2 plus 6 is 8, plus 3 times x minus 2. So it's at this point that I always state you know what? It makes it easier if you just center yourself first, right? Center yourself, right, before you go through the whole problem. Namaste, for sure. All right, so here we go. Um, big yoga fan, by the way, for those of you that didn't know. It's good stuff. Anyway, so for over all of this, we're getting there, but I mean, we need a 1. So let's divide everything by 8. So I've got 4 over 8. 8 divided by 8 is 1 plus 3 eighths times x minus 2. Oh, this is going to be nasty. And then... 4 over 8 at least is 1 half. We don't quite have it as 1 minus. So that's going to be 1 minus a minus 3 eighths times x minus 2. 
So right here is R. There's A, it's one minus R. So again, we're gonna take our function, put that over here, our typical template of, and then that would be A, R to the N, and we now know that that's equal to sigma as N starts at zero to infinity of the first term, one half, times negative three-eighths x minus two. All of that is r raised to the n. So we're going to write that as the first four non-zero terms in the general term. Ugh. All of that to the one, to the zero is one times one-half. There's your first term. That's easy enough. The next term is going to be gross. So negative three-eighths times one-half is going to be negative three-sixteenths. We're multiplying these two because we're doing this to the one. And then that's x minus two. All right, not bad, not bad. We got this, right? Plus, and now this is going to be, n is going to be 2, so it's going to be 9 64ths times 1 half. You know what might be easier? Multiply this by negative 3 eighths, because we're multiplying by the common ratio again and again, and that's this. So negative 3 times negative 3 is plus 9. 8 times 16 is 128, I think. 80 and 48, yeah, it is. And then that is x minus 2 to the second. We have one more. Minus, because we're multiplying by 3 eighths again, so it's minus 27 over 8 times 128 is going to be 960 and 64 is 1,024. Makes some sense. X minus 2, going to fit this in the screen, to the third, plus dot dot dot, plus your nth term. So yeah, this is gross. Do I ask my students to do this? Yes. Have I ever seen this on the BC exam? Oh, heck no. Have I seen this on a lot of college students' work that I've worked with? No. But I want to prepare you for everything. And this, this is everything. And it's sick. All right, I will see you in the next video. Got some good stuff coming up there, some manipulations to do. Until then, peace.